Hi everybody, uh, hope that you're doing well. We're going to conclude uh, section 8.3 with uh, graphing quadratic functions uh, with their graphs. We're going to conclude it uh, with this particular video and in this video we're going to look at the second style of quadratic function. You might remember at the conclusion of the second video I pointed out the fact that we would be looking at a second form for a quadratic function and in that form the coordinate values of the vertex, the x and y values of the vertex would be easily identified by just looking at the function that we would not need to go through any opposite of b over 2a to get the x value of the vertex and we would then not have to take that value and substitute it into the function to find the y value of the vertex so we're going to move in to that uh, second type up here on the board and I want to mention this first before we sort of derive how this form is going to come about but I'll identify the form right now up here in this upper left hand corner of this whiteboard. The second form of quadratic function will actually be written in this way. f of x is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. And you can see in the lower right hand corner, and we will prove this and show this, the vertex of the function when it's written in this form will be h k. I'm just going to leave it in that way right now, but we will be returning to this and we'll talk a little bit more specifically about the characteristics of h k and what we really need to make sure that we do to make sure that we have the correct vertex. Now, what I'm going to take a look at first, we're going to take a quadratic function that was written in the first form that we talked about in the first and second videos, and we're eventually going to take this quadratic function right here and we're going to translate it we're going to change its form to the form that looks like this right up here. Now when I do the transformation, when I do make, make the changes for this particular one, it's not something that you're going to have to be aware of. You're not going to have to perform that duty on any exam. But I do want to make a stab at doing the transformation so that you can see uh, that the item for H and the item for K actually will stand for the components of the vertex. So here's what we're going to do first. Here's a form of a quadratic function that we have already looked at. We haven't looked at this specific one, but we have looked at this particular style. F of X is equal to 2X squared minus 4x plus 5. I'm going to just go through the plan of finding the vertex. So we're going to find the x value of the vertex. The value of a is 2. The value of b is negative 4. I've already written down the formula for the x value of the vertex, the opposite of b over 2a. And I've already shown the substitution, but I'll play it back. Brought down the opposite sign, and in place of b, negative 4 over 2 times a, 2 times 2. And we'll get this down to a positive 4 for the numerator and a positive 4 for the denominator. The x value of the vertex is 1. And I'm just going to show that right there. Now we're going to find the y value. So I'm going to erase this. And now let's evaluate this function when the domain is 1. 
and we'll have 2 times the quantity of 1 squared, negative 4 times 1, plus 5. Come down. 2 times 1 squared is 1, negative 4 times 1, plus 5. 2 times 1 is 2, we've got a negative 4 there, a positive 5 at the end. 2 and 5 are 7, and 7 coupled with a negative 4 would give us 3. So using the opposite of b over 2a and then evaluating the function for that domain of 1, we get a vertex for this quadratic function to be 1, 3. Now I'm going to keep that vertex right there. Just want to make sure that we know that the vertex for this equation is now 1, 3. But now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to take this quadratic, quadratic function and we're going to transform it into this structure right up here. This new quadratic function structure that's going to give us our second type. Now, I'll say this slowly, but I'm going to preface my comments by saying the following. What I'm about to show here, you don't need to know. You, you will not be expected to do any of this in our course, but I'm going to do it very slowly so that you can see how this can get transformed to look in this form. I'm going to bring down the equal sign. And I'm going to bring down the first two terms. And I'm going to tuck them. And then I'm going to put off to the side positive 5. So this second step that I've just written down is the same as the one above it. Same thing, I've only grouped the first two terms. And now the next step is we're going to factor out whatever our a value is. Our a value is 2. Now please understand what I'm about to do here. I'm not factoring out the entire greatest common factor out of this grouping. I'm only going to factor out the a. The a is the positive 2. That's all I'm going to do. So you don't want to follow up with a question, well, why didn't you take out an x as well? We don't. Not to get it into this form. We're just going to pull out the a, the 2. So I'm going to pull out a 2, make a house, and we're going to divide each one of these two terms by that 2, and that's going to get it down to an x squared minus 2x, and then I'll just bring down the positive 5 again. I'm going to have to do a little bit of erasing right here. Hang in there. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to take this binomial that you see inside this house and we're going to do the task of completing the square. I want to turn this binomial into a trinomial that will be a perfect square trinomial. Bring down the equal sign. I'm going to bring down the 2 and I'm going to make a house, a trinomial house, I'm going to bring down that x squared and that negative 2x. Then we're going to take the coefficient of this middle term, negative 2, just like the action of completing the square. I'm going to take the coefficient of this linear term and I'm going to kind of pull it off. And we're going to divide it by 2. We're going to cut it in half. Divide it by 2. And then that result of negative 1 will square. 
Negative 1 squared will give us positive 1. Put that positive 1 right there. Now let's just pause for a second. This statement that we've got right here is certainly not equivalent to the one above it. I mean, I'll go ahead and put the positive 5 right out there. But this new statement that we've written down here is certainly not equivalent to the step right above it. It isn't. So here's what we're going to have to do. We've created a perfect square trinomial right here. But we need to do something to this so that this expression will be equivalent to the ones written right above it. Now the new thing that has been done to this equation, we've added a 1 inside here. We're going to have to do something with this so that it will be equivalent to the items written right above it. Here's what we're going to have to do first. We're going to have to distribute this 2 with this positive 1. We're going to have to distribute the 2 with the positive 1. And when we distribute that, we're going to get a positive 2. We're now going to have to subtract away that positive 2 so that this expression will be the same as the steps written right above it. Because the way that it looks right now, it's not. So 2 times a positive 1 is a positive 2. But we're going to have to remove that positive 2, so I'm going to remove it by over here next to this positive 5 putting minus 2. Now this might not look the same as the steps written right above it, but it is. Now we're going to create our binomial square here. We're going to have 2, make a house, and we're going to have x minus 1 squared, and then simplify this and we'll have plus 3. We now have our new form right here, which let me put it right here. 2 times the quantity of x minus 1 squared plus 3. Now before we did any of this, you recall we just found the vertex, and the vertex was 1, 3. Look at this new form right here f of x is equal to 2 times the quantity of x minus 1 squared plus 3. Here's your h, and there's your k. So we've got our a, here's our x, here's our h squared, there's the k. Just so happens to be 1, 3. 1, 3. When a quadratic function is written in this form, we don't have to calculate the vertex. The vertex can be inspected and seen by just looking at the function. And here's the key thing that we have to remember about the HK. Your value of H is always the real number that follows the minus sign. Here, it is a key thing that I want to emphasize. The x value of your vertex is your h. And it's this guy right here. Your value of h is always the number that follows the subtraction sign. This is not one of those cases where this negative sign is attached to this 1. It is not. The h value or the x value of your vertex is the number that follows the subtraction sign. The number that follows the subtraction sign here is 1. That is the x value of your vertex. The y value of your vertex is the number that you see over here at the end. In this case, it's a positive 3. We have it right here. 
So that's the proof of how this item is going to work. Now I'm going to erase and we're going to go to our first example and show you how it goes. Number one, f of x is equal to the opposite or a negative one times the quantity of x minus one squared plus four. This just happens to be the sign of your a. That's all that that is. It's actually a negative one multiplied by the quantity of x minus one squared plus four. Now the very first step that we want to make sure that we do, we want to know how that parabola is going to open. It's either going to open up or it's going to open down. And that's hinged on the fact of your value of a. Well your value of a, I mean we really can't see it, but your value of a is right here. It's actually a, I'll kind of squeeze it right in there. Your value of a, there's your a. Your value of a is negative one. It's negative. That means it's going to open downward. It's going down. Now, we don't have to compute our vertex. I'll just note it right here and then we'll put it in the table. The x value of your vertex is your h. Your h is the number that follows the subtraction sign. So don't make this mistake. I'll say it slowly. The x value of your vertex is not negative 1. Not in this form. The x value of the vertex is the number that follows the subtraction sign. And the number that follows the subtraction sign is 1. That's the x value of your vertex. And the y value is that positive 4. So now let's come down with our little chart. I'll put an x and I'll put an f of x. And I'm just going to kind of put sort of like a number line. And we'll make this so that we have 1, 2, 3, 4. total of five points that we want. This is going to be the vertex just like before, and the vertex is 1, 4. Got that. I'm going to erase this, and we'll try to make sure that we have some room. Now this is going to be our first mirrored point set of points, and this is going to be the second. So let's establish the first. Go to this x value of the vertex, which is 1, and we're just going to move over on the number line, one unit to the right, and one unit to the right on the number line from a positive 1 will give us a positive 2. And if we go to the left on that number line from that positive 1, that will give us 0. The x value of our vertex is 1. If we're looking at this in terms of a number line, the first integer to the right of positive 1 is positive 2, and the first integer to the left of positive 1 is 0. Now, we're either going to pick this domain of 0 or this domain of 2 and shove it into this function and find our y values. I'll use the 0. So we're going to put a 0 right there. And I'll try to do this carefully. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the second is 1. But we have an opposite sign out there or a negative 1 out there. And negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 plus 4 will give us 3. So when the domain is 0, the range or the y value is going to be 3. And so is that one. Let's continue on the number line. The first integer to the right of positive 2 would be positive 3. 
and the first integer to the left of 0 would be negative 1. We're going to pick one of those values. Let's go ahead and pick the x value of 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. We're going to square that 2. That will give us 4 with the negative 1 to the left of that. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 4 would give us 0. So this is going to be 0. And this fellow right here is going to be 0. And we've got our five points. Two sets of mirrored points along with the vertex. Let's plot it. Let's see what it looks like. 1, 4. X is 1. Go up 4. There's the vertex. The highest point. This is going down. 2, 3. Go over 2 and up 3. Zero three, x is zero and up three. There's the first pair of mirrored points. And now the far right column three zero. And negative one zero. Now we'll make that parabola. that parabola. The axis of symmetry. That's x is equal to the x value of the vertex. The x value of the vertex is 1. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to 1. The domain and the range. The domain is the entire set of real numbers. I just kept it lodged there. Our range. Well, the range, because the vertex is at its highest point here, and its highest point is a range value of 4, if we move this vertex point over to the y-axis, the highest range value is positive 4, and then it goes infinitely in a negative direction. So the largest range value is 4, and the smallest is negative infinity. That's the range. And then finally, it's either a maximum or a minimum point that we have on this graph. We have a maximum point, the highest point. The maximum point has two parts to it. We have to identify where that maximum point occurs and what the actual maximum value is. The maximum value occurs at x is equal to 1. So we say maximum value occurs at x is equal to 1 and the value is whatever the range value is for that and it is 4 and that would satisfy that particular one. Now let's quickly do a second one. Let me just kind of erase some things here, all of this. And let's get this out of the way and get it done. We'll just improvise here. All right, the second. F of x is equal to the quantity of x plus 3 squared minus 1. Your A is situated right outside here. You don't see anything, so that means that the A has to be a positive 1. And because A is positive, 
it's going to open up. That's item number one. Item number two, the caution is identifying the vertex. The x value of the vertex must be a number that follows a minus sign. This is not following a minus sign. So we're going to have to translate this little binomial expression in here so that we can clearly identify the x value of the vertex. Now I'll give you a shortcut in a moment but we're going to have to translate this a little bit and I'll translate it right here. f of x is equal to the quantity of I'm going to bring down the x. I'm going to have to change this addition sign to a subtraction sign because the x value of the vertex for this format must follow a subtraction sign. But when we translate this, we've got, to, we've got to translate it into a form that's going to mean the same thing as this. So we put a minus sign. And after that minus sign, we'll simply change this positive 3 to its opposite, a negative 3. Now let's just make sure that this binomial is the same as that, that they're equivalent. If I were to change translate this back. x minus negative 3 would become x plus positive 3, which is there. But we have a subtraction sign here. And the number that follows that subtraction sign is a negative 3. And that is the x value of our vertex. I'm just going to kind of note it right here. And then the y value of our vertex is this value right here. And that value that we're looking at is a negative 1. So there's our vertex. Now, the shortcut of what you can do. I'm going to erase this because we're going to work with the original function that we have. Whenever you see your binomial expression inside here, and if it's followed by an addition sign, all you have to do with this number is simply change it to its opposite. The opposite of positive 3 is a negative 3, and that will be the x value of your vertex. The y value is the real number that you're looking at right there, which is a negative 1. So I'm going to come down. x, f of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The vertex right here negative 3, negative 1. Now let's get our mirrored points. This is this number line right here. You're looking at an x value of negative 3. If you go to the right of negative 3 on that number line, you'll be at negative 2. If you go to the left of negative 3 on the number line, you'll be at negative 4. So negative 2, negative 4. Let's take one of those values, it doesn't matter which one, and evaluate it to find our range values. Let's go ahead and take the negative 2. Let's put it in here. f of negative 2 will be equal to the quantity of negative 2 plus 3 squared minus 1. Well, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, so 1 squared minus 1 will be 1 minus 1, and that'll be 0. So he's 0, and his friend over here is 0. Now let's back off again. The integer to the right of negative 2 would be negative 1. The integer to the left of negative 4 would be negative 5. Either pick negative 5 or negative 1. It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and pick the negative 1. The value of f when the domain is negative 1 will be the quantity of negative 1 plus 3 squared negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 squared minus 1. 4 minus 1, that will give us a 3. So a 3 is there and a 3 is there and we'll plot.
negative 3, negative 1. We'll do the vertex. Negative 3. It'll probably be off right here, but uh, we'll just work with it. Negative 3, down 1. Right about here. There would be the vertex. This one's opening up. Then we've got negative 2, 0. Negative 2, 0, there. We've got negative 4, 0. Negative 4, 0, there. So there's the first pair of mirrored points. And then we've got negative 1, positive 3, negative 1, up 3, right about there. And we've got negative 5. And negative 5, positive 3, is its mirrored friend right about there. And then make the parabola. There's the parabola. Let's identify the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to whatever the x value of the vertex is, which is negative 3. That's axis of symmetry. Then the domain and range. Domain, like all of them. All real numbers, the range. Well, the range, because the graph is opening up, the vertex represents a minimum value. So the smallest range value is this point right here. If we move it over to the y-axis, the smallest range value is negative 1. It counts, so a bracket is put there. And then it picks up all of the values of y infinitely. It just keeps going in a positive infinity direction. That would be the range. And then finally, we have a minimum value. The minimum value occurs at x is equal to negative 3. The minimum value occurs at the location of x at negative 3 and the minimum value is negative 1. It occurs at x is equal to negative 3 and the actual value is a range value or a y value of negative 1. So that's the second form that we have right there that we wanted to get out to you. There's two different forms in 8.3, and you'll be uh, expected to know both of those forms. The most recent one, we can clearly see the vertex. In the first one, we had to find it. So we'll be moving into 8.4 and getting ourselves out of Chapter 8 here. Thank you. Bye-bye.